What's up group chat? I'm back. IS2 is coming and so am I. There's a bunch of tier lists and guides everywhere for IS2, but only mine matters because I said so. And if you watch someone else's guide, they're immediately wrong and I hate them forever. If you haven't watched my first video on integrated strategies, I explained the basics of the game out there, so go watch that video first. This video is going to be about all the little cool new features that get added to the permanent game mode and some operator recommendations. No, seriously, how'd you find this place? This is an absolute upgrade to the room we had a couple weeks ago. I mean, it's a lot smaller, but the design is really nice. Connections? You must be in high places in order to find a spot like this. You bribed them with the FUMO. How? That sounds more like a threat than bribing. First of all, shout out to my boys Haku and Taxes is my pillow. Haku helped me understand all the new stuff and translated the moon runes when I needed them, and Taxes was glorious enough to lend me his CN account so I could actually play the game mode. If you have extra time, you should definitely check out Taxes' channel because he is very cool and awesome. Anyways, let's start with the investment system. In the shop nodes, you have the ability to stonk your ingots. Basically, you can sacrifice your ingots in the current run and store them in the shop node one at a time. The investment can fail, and if it does, you won't be able to invest for the rest of the run, so have fun being at the mercy of RNG. You might wonder why you'd even want to invest in the first place, and there's tiers you get for investing a certain amount of ingots. At 25 ingots, you get an extra shop slot, so you can buy more items in the shop. At 100, you unlock an artifact to be obtainable. 200 gets you the retrieve system, which I'll talk about later. 325 gets you another artifact to become obtainable, and at 500, you get another shop slot. Now, getting 500 ingots in a run is practically impossible, so it makes sense that the investment system saves throughout all your runs. The retrieve system you unlock at 200 ingots lets you take some of your ingots back. You get one ingot every time you retrieve an ingot, but the price to get back an ingot will increase by one every time you retrieve an ingot. So on your first retrieve, it'll cost one ingot, but on your second, it'll cost two ingots to get one ingot back, and so on. You might be wondering why you should retrieve ingots in the first place if you lose more than you gain, but some artifacts in the shop can be extremely spicy, and you know, you might be broke as hell, so you better start investing. Where do you get all these ingots anyways? Well, when you enter a stage, treasure chests have a chance to spawn on a random tile. If an enemy walks over the treasure chest, well, no treasure for you. If the chest is still around by the time the stage is over, you get a whole one ingot. One ingot isn't much, obviously, but you could invest that ingot into getting bigger rewards, hmm? Your run can also be affected by repertoires and hallucinations. Repertoires are nice little boosts that affect certain nodes. They're automatically used when the condition is met, and they range from getting more XP after a battle to boosting operator attack and HP in the next battle. After the repertoire has been used, it goes away. You can only have them one at a time, so if you get another repertoire, you have to choose between them. Hallucinations, on the other hand, do a slight minuscule amount of trolling. You can have up to two hallucinations at a time, and they last for the entire floor. These things can make the floors longer, increase the stats of enemies, and even conceal nodes beyond your next step, basically making you play the game mode blind. You can also buy supporting items in the shop to bring into battle. These range from those SP charger thingies, to patriot mines, to exploding non-lethal pressurized gas that shoves enemies. After your run ends, just like IS-1, you get inspiration points, which you can put into operator attack defense and other boosts that'll help your future runs. IS-2 features funny challenges in the form of survey entries. These are special runs that start you with a certain condition and give you a specific win condition. For example, one of them has you start with the four IS-specific ops, Stormeye, Pit, Touch, and Sharp, and dramatically increases the chance for emergency battles. If you're scoffing at the idea of challenges for fun, there's rewards for completing survey entries. And speaking of rewards, IS-2 sure gives you a lot. Each time you level up your IS-2 level, you get mats, and as you can see here, there's quite a lot of them in total. It's super easy to level up, costs no sanity, and gives you free stuff, so go ahead and play the game mode. If you don't have a diverse roster, you can always bring a friend support unit at the start of the run, or you can try out the free monthly squad team. 
it. Alright, so all the unpacking's done, there's nothing left in the truck. You're missing all your firearms? Uh, yeah, I wonder how that happened. No, no, I'm completely sympathetic with you here. I, I really hate it when that happens. Disclaimer here, I am no meta slave or summoner simp. My philosophy for IS2 is that you play this game mode for fun, so I'm not gonna specifically recommend these types of operators. We already know how good Thorns, Mountains, Silver Ash, Shelter, and Surter are, but if you constantly play the game mode with the same AFK Guard Knights crew, it gets stale fast. I hear a lot of people recommend to pull for Ling or build scene for IS2 because they're summoners, and from my personal experience, while they do make it a cakewalk, they just don't hit. The majority of my enjoyment comes from playing around with different ops and making crack shit I never knew was possible, but if you enjoy the Metaslave crew, then eh, go ahead. You have plenty of time to build a diverse roster since it's, you know, a permanent game mode, so if you're a new player, don't worry about this section too much. These are just operators that I think would be super useful to use. Obviously, you should build a couple of your 3 stars and 4 stars. Cruise, Spot, Anzol, Midnight, and Fang are all solid choices. Three stars are great to build because they cost absolutely no hope and are a far better alternative than the no skill, low stat reserve ops. For four stars to build, I'd go with Cutter because of her great damage and burst, May because she has crowd control which is good for Duck Mafia Man and Bear Yakuza, and Jay because he does really consistent damage with really great healing. One mechanic they love throwing around in IS2 is elemental damage in the form of neural impairment, so your elemental healers like Mulberry and Honeyberry are great here. You really only need one or two sources of healing throughout your entire run, and since elemental healers have that super big mega wide range, they can give you lots of leeway in terms of placement. Now for 6 star recommendations. I was going to make a list of all the cool 6 stars people should try, but after doing a couple of runs myself, I realized that you can make practically any 6 stars shine. I played on Texas' account, and he didn't have a lot of his ops built, but I still thoroughly enjoyed all the runs I did on there because I was able to try out new operators that I've never used. I never planned on pulling for Fiametta, Golden Glow, or Horn, but after getting what's essentially a free trial of them, I'm actually reconsidering my pull planning. Obviously, there's gonna be some ops better with certain artifacts than others, but as a whole, integrated strategies made me realize how personal the playthrough experiences were. If I used any other account, I would be shilling how good the other operators are instead. So, you know, don't try speedrunning Silver Ash E2 or Scene Masteries just because they're good in IS. You don't have to pull for Ling just because she makes the game mode a walk in the park. You can use your own roster, build the ops that you think would be fun to play around with, and go crazy. Except Tsukinogi. Don't build Tsukinogi, she's absolutely horrible and dog shit. Alright, so all my files and paperwork are in check. What's with this box? How do you get these?